JRP Edge Series gauges. Hello and welcome to Just Race Parts. Today's demonstration will go through features available on all 52mm Edge Series gauges. To supplement the video guide today, download the latest user manual for detailed written instructions. This can be found in the video description below. This video is broken into feature driven sections. You can select the timestamps and revise again at any time. Right guys, let's get into it. In front of you today, we have a water temperature gauge. Looking around, you can see the humble attention to detail that delivers a high quality and cost effective product. Notice the color coded connectors. Here we have a colored connector to match the input cable from the sensor provided in your kit. Besides that, there is a double pin connector for optional remote button. Some people choose to stash this under the dash or permanently mount it somewhere convenient in the car. As an alternative, you can use the handy button on the rear of your gauge to change the settings before final installation. To the bottom here, we have two four pin power connectors. Your 12 volt power source can be connected to either socket. The second one is left handy and available to jump connect power to another gauge. This can be done with a 20 cm power link cable provided with all kits. This is a great feature to have as we don't have to run separate power for multi-gauge installs. Turning the gauge on, we're greeted with this awesome opening sequence. What you've just seen is one of three different animated sequences available on Startup. We'll go into that further later in the video. Now, let's start setting up the gauge to display the information that we need. At the moment, we can see we have live temperature data being displayed on the screen in front of us. Using the button press on either the back of the gauge or the remote button, we're going to press and scroll through the menu. Notice if you stop briefly, the gauge will demonstrate what that feature influences, even if we don't understand the acronym. If we stop a little longer, the gauge will return to reading live data. First button press on the menu shows us peak value information. This is just historically the highest temperature the gauge has recorded. Holding the button down for three seconds will clear this value, confirmed with a beep. Just as a side note, peak values will not be recorded here lower than 20 degrees Celsius, just in case you're trying to troubleshoot in colder climates. It just won't work. Next menu option you can probably tell is color setup. A long press lets us enter the color change menu. We can then scroll through and select our normal daytime running colors. Notice one of the options turns off the screen completely. This is called dark mode. Some people choose to use this to turn off the display only for some running conditions. The color option in the menu after that is RGB. Once chosen, the gauge will cycle through all 11 colors when in use. To set a color in this menu, simply find the color you're looking for, then wait for the gauge to return to live data. Color will now be set for daytime running. If the gauge is installed correctly with the yellow wires connected to the headlight circuit, we can select a different color option for nighttime viewing. Simply go through the same process while the headlights are turned on in the car. And for the sake of demonstration, I'll change this to green. So now we're back at the live data and you can see when the headlights are turned on, the color changes automatically. Now, since we're talking about the headlights, this leads us to the next option available in the menu. A long press on BR enters the brightness adjustment menu. Typically, you would want the gauge to be as bright as possible during the day, then tone down or completely off at night. Remember dark mode from the color change menu? Comes in handy here, depending on your preferences. For best results setting up the correct brightness at night, it's recommended to actually wait until dark to try and get the gauge close to what the factory instruments actually show in your car. We've now gone through the first three options in the menu. The next two features are buzzer alarm types 
and buzzer alarm volume. For this demonstration, we're going to skip the alarm first and actually go to the fifth option in the menu. We'll set the volume first. We're going to set this to one, which is the quietest volume available. This will save your ears from bleeding while we choose the alarm in the next process. So now we'll scroll to the fourth option in the menu displayed as NO. A long press as always gets us into the menu. We can then change the alarm type we want to hear when the gauge enters a danger zone. As we progress through the list, we can hear the increasing urgency till it's too late. Sorry, eardrums. If you've recovered from that, we can then set your final desired volume by scrolling to the fifth option again in the menu. It would be best that you do this while the engine's running or even with your helmet on. You know, because race car. Then you can decide what level of punishment your ears really deserve in the danger zone. Sixth option in the menu, labelled as AC, configures the opening and closing ceremony. This is only triggered when the accessory switch is activated with the turn of your ignition key. Enter the menu with a long press, then scroll through one of three options. Then wait about three seconds for the settings to save. Turn your ignition key off, then on again to view your changes. You'll have to repeat this a few times to check all variations available. Now, if we scroll to the seventh option in the menu, hold to select, we can go through and set temperature value that will trigger our warning buzzer alarm. Hold the selection button for a quick value changes, scrolling through the numbers. Short individual presses will allow for fine tuning of your chosen value. Once you're happy with the set value, leave the gauge and it will store this in the memory. It will then of course, return back to live temperature feed. The last option in the menu common to all edge series gauges is the indicator display type. Locate the SO option in the menu and hold. A confirmation beep will let you enter the menu and a short press will take you through the various display options. It's best to work with this setting after the car's engine has been running for at least five minutes. This is because all indicator types appear the same for temperature ranges below 20 degrees Celsius. Once you're happy with the display type, wait for the gauge to return to the live data screen. That's it guys, we're all set up. As mentioned before, detailed written instructions can be found in the description below. This is a generalized setting introduction video. In the future, we'll be releasing tailored content covering features unique to other Edge series gauges, including installation, sensor-specific calibration, and other handy tips. And remember, if you're still completely lost and need a hand, reach out and contact our experts at JRP. Our sales team are there to help. Hey, if you found any value in this video, subscribe, like, and hit that bell icon you'll be updated with awesome new features on JRP products. Till next time, take care from Just Race Parts Team.